Alright guys, welcome back to another MCRIT tutorial. So today I am going to be doing a quick tutorial on the command arguments. Usually I don't do a snapshot tutorials, it's closer to pre-release. I think it's also in pre-release for 2022.2, so it should be released pretty soon. So I'm not, I feel pretty confident that nothing will be changing within the next couple days so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the command arguments if there's any confusion over anything that um, people haven't watched in gold orion's tutorials and you have some questions about it then hopefully that will be cleared up in this particular video um, i'm still pretty new to the actual command system but i have a pretty good understanding thanks to gold orion explaining how things work and stuff over a few different um situations so uh, what you need to do first is go to your green plus icon, click that, and then you need to click uh, the command option. You want to give it a name. Um, again, this has to be English characters, uh, like text for regular things. Uh, you can use underscores, numbers. Um, underscores aren't really needed. They already get applied to the registry, so you don't need to worry about that. So we're just going to call it... Um, we're going to say something like, uh, let's see, um, I don't know, we'll go block, uh, broken, broken, and, oh, actually, no, we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll say, um, looking at block. Now this will be the name of the command. Uh, you can also change the name of the command in the actual uh, the command thing. So click that, and then we can actually set the command that we want to run. I'm just going to look at type basically looking for the command. Now this basically will be the command that we actually run. Uh, if you want to restrict access to the player, um, you can have different op levels, which are from one to four. Four being the highest op level that uh, is that people would be able or would require. I think the default is three or something. I can't remember for servers. Uh, no requirement is basically the setting that will allow all players to use it. So we can use that. Uh, over on the right hand side, you have your import and export features, uh, very similar to the procedure system. This one will actually export a special command uh, system called CMD. Uh, TPL. Uh, so that's the file ending of the uh, name of the file. So basically what this will be for is specifically commands and um, it'll be used for commands. Now you can also import those uh, files themselves. Uh, you have only that option for importing though. All right. So with that being said, we have our main command entry point or en yeah, entry point, which is basically the main function for where our command is going to be uh, running from. So anytime we type this command here, anything connected to the screen block is going to run. Anything not connected to it will not run. So again, it will be just saved in your workspace, but it won't actually be used in the actual procedure. So when you first start with the new command, what it's going to do is it's going to call a procedure. Now this is a action type of thing which is under the actions tab. What it can do is for the new command arguments, uh, you can use call procedure. And what this will do is it allows you to uh, run certain events that happen. So you can mix that in with your uh, parameters and it will allow you to make more complex systems and stuff. Uh, basically what it's doing right here is it's just going to, when this command is run, when they type this command, it's going to literally just call the procedure. So there's absolutely no testing for conditions or anything like that. Uh, the other option uh, is accept any parameters and call procedure. Uh, this one's for the original system where we had to use command parameters, uh, which were like the one, two, three, zero, and all those other things uh, to basically specify strings of text. Now this is still in the existing thing. When you convert over from a older workspace to this update, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to be using these blocks here for basically um, your commands. So it will be similar to this rather than using a call procedure. 
Um, at least that's what I've noticed in the past. So there's also parameters which are a little bit more advanced. These are for the adva the new system. Um, what they allow you to do is basically test for or set uh, parameters which are for um, things like certain parts of the command. Uh, very similar when you type um, uh, uh, slash set and then the block name and then the coordinates. So each one of those uh, parts would be for that particular system. So again, uh, these would all basically end up being that same thing. So if we were to set, make a set command, then we would need the actual type of the block. This would probably be a quote thing like this. So we could basically test for the, the type of the block. It might use a single word depending on how it's set up. It might use a quotation depending on what it is. Uh, there's that and then you had your coordinates behind it. So basically that would have been your X, Y, and Z for your your um, parameters here. So basically that's what a similar uh, set command would look like for setting a block. Uh, we're just going to do something really simple and just get the block that we're going that we're looking at. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we actually need a few different block or parameters. What we need to do is we need to um, get the data for uh, what block? Uh, actually, you know what? We're, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at something. Um, I don't know if we we want to look at something, or it might be a little bit too complex to do that for the first tutorial. I'm not that skilled at it yet. So what we're going to do is we're, what we're going to do is is um, just get a word for the player, and this is just going to be a single word. So uh, if we want to get a value for something like um looking uh then we can see if we might be looking north so i don't know if there's a direction it doesn't look like there's a direction one here that we can test for but we can test for that in a um particular thing but we need to test for the actual command for that another option that we could do is we might be wanting to set um something to basically test for a different ro rotation or uh, yaw maybe. So maybe we wanted something specific like direction. We would test for a direction. So we would set like a word for direction. And then the other one, what we would do is we would say something like yaw and we, would we could print out the yaw text. Uh, again, you can put parameters inside parameters. So um, for example, if we wanted to also test if something like if we were running or something like that uh, we could also run a variable so if we wanted to basically toggle a variable uh, what we could do is we could do something like um, run and then we could basically toggle a variable on and then we could basically have movement vector whatever direction we're looking at uh, that would work too so uh, we could do something like that. Uh, we'll just uh, type something for a parameter name. Now this needs to be different from other parameters. Uh, for example, uh, this one should be run. And then what we'll do is we'll basically say, um, uh, what should we do? Um, actually, this would be the parameter for the command. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go command and then what we're going to do is put a run procedure behind this. And if there is a um, logic between it, so if there's something like run, then what we want to do is we want to make a condition for that. So basically um, enable, I don't know if we can, it supports, no, it doesn't, uh, toggle. So we'll just say toggle. And basically what that will do is it will allow us to toggle the um, thing. Now these command parameter names are going to be displayed when the player actually starts typing the command. So for example, if we want this command to be called run, uh, that might actually be running, maybe uh, running, uh, then we could basically toggle this on and off. Now uh, we need to actually run a procedure inside of this one in order to make it do something. Now, 
this will basically toggle um, so if it's true then it will run true if it's false then it will run false but we also need a condition if they do not type this particular thing so we're going to be running a condition after this so for example um, see I don't know what, really if I want to do that so um, we'll just say command or CMD for command one uh, just so we can actually identify it. So this will be the command we're running. Then we have the command for it, which will be run. And then we will have the um, thing that we want there. So we need to make two procedures for that. Uh, the first one that we're going to have is basically when it fails. So we're going to make a procedure. We're going to call this um, fail. Uh, this can be called anything that we want. Uh, for the name, it doesn't matter. We're just basically using it to basically determine what happens. So I'm just going to print out a message to the player, and we're going to say um, type run, and then that will give us um, an idea. Or no, I think that's going to be basically for run true. or false so we want uh, to basically run true or false we're going to put that on our action bar so we can see that pop up and then uh, actually what we're going to do is we're going to say fail two and then fail one is going to tell us what command to run so run is what we're going to be typing here so basically what it will allow us to do is tell us to run uh, type run and then it will tell us to use t true or false so we want to basically specify the fail one and then this is our fail two so basically that will allow us to know what commands to use uh, then what we can do is we can actually run what we want in there so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just quickly create a procedure again uh, we're going to actually need a player persistent variable and we're going to go ahead and set that to actually we'll just do lifetime that would probably be better and then we're going to set this to a logic value and then what we're going to do is just say running or auto run and we can capitalize the R just so it's easier to see. Uh, by default, it's going to be false, so we don't constantly run. And then what we can do is we can create the um, procedure for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to just call it auto run so we can know what procedure it's for. And then what we want to do is we want to test if the command for the command parameter is set to true or false and then we're going to set that our action based on that so command parameters are is a new tab right on the left hand side right here it says command parameters uh, you can specify all the different types of things that you want in here there is string parameters message parameters as well as all, a whole bunch of other things now again what we want to know is what value this is so for example uh, we want a logic return value and that's this one right here Whoop, wrong procedure I'm just going to save that and get that out of the way uh, we want a logic procedure so what we're going to do is make sure that this name matches with our name in the pers the command itself so this one needs to be toggle and we also want to know if the command that we have is a certain value. So if we want to run multiple values, we, for example, if we want to actually run um, a run command, then what we want to do is like um, for this one, we need to test for that. So we're gonna use this one. This is a string command or parameter. So what we're gonna use is a string one here. We're gonna type command. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna test for a value for that string. So we, what we want to do is basically run 
and this will turn toggle or run. Now we want to know if this is true. Um, actually, before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two parts. So it's going to test for the running and then it's going to test if it's true. If it's false, then what I want to do is basically turn toggle that variable on and off. So what I'm going to do is just place the global variable on and then I'm going to set true if the variable is true. And then if it's false, then I'm going to set it to false. Um, after that, what we can do is we can use a update tick procedure and run it off of those global variables uh, for the player. So that's pretty simple. Um, again, we're just running it based on what value that we have. So we're going to save that, link this up to that part. And now if we wanted different commands in here, what we could do is different ones, but it would require the same system. So for example, command, and then it would also have, also need a toggle on and off uh, feature for that particular thing. All right, so with that being said, um, this is our command that we basically run. We have two fail procedures that run, and then we also have um, a auto run feature. So we can save that, that part's all done. Now we just need to actually make the event. So what we're going to do is create a procedure and then we're going to go auto run script. Uh, so we know this is going to be what we're using to run with. So what we're going to do is just scroll down until we see player tick update. This is just going to be a quick demonstration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the auto run variable is true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set the movement vector for the entity um, and test for the direction uh, for basically the rotation where we're basically facing. So we can basically get the um, auto run feature set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm not sure if that's changed. There's some different things around here. So we want this and then we want to test for the direction of the entity. And then we're going to use this block here. So we want to know if they're facing north, east, south, or west. So north, east, south, or if they're not facing any direction, then what we would want to do is run, actually we want to run uh, another one for west. So we'll just set this all up and then what we can do is we can set the movement vector to those positions. So we want the player to move um, negative Z for this one. So negative one, we'll set that to negative one. East is positive X, so we want that one. Um, X is negative one and then south is positive z so that should cover that part uh, what we also want to do is basically make sure that the entity can actually um, move between those blocks so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the entity velocity part so anything that we don't require the entity to move what we're going to do is replace those with those so basically any zeros so that one that one that one this one, this one, and these two down here. So then we just need to re replace it with the corresponding ones. So X, Y, Y, and Z, and then Z and Y again down here, and then X and Y here. So basically this will allow the player to move in those directions when they're not facing that direction so they'll be able to surf kind of side to side and up and down if they want to all right so that's basically that that's our procedure now it's only going to run if auto run is enabled so we should be able to actually test the test this in game now so i'll hop in game and then we can demonstrate how it works all right so we are officially in game so what i'm going to do is i am going to just fly around um somewhere where there's a little bit of an open area uh, we can test it preferably in the plains but it doesn't look like this area does has any plains biomes uh it doesn't help the view distance is low so what we'll do is we'll just kind of find a spot that's mostly clear uh, this village might do the trick 
it's pretty flat around here so what we'll do is we'll just spawn down here and what we'll do is we'll type in the command so I think it was um, can't remember what the command was let me just track quickly I'll look into the uh, command so it's CMD1 that's what we want so we'll minus that CMD1 and then you can see that there is um, not any particular thing we can type it and it'll tell us to type slash run so we'll do run and then it basically lists the command argument names so again command is the run command that we want and then toggle is the version so if we just type run it's going to tell us to type true or false so uh, we can basically use tab to basically auto complete this uh, based on what we want so if we want to do hit true then as you can see we kind of move forward and we just keep running constantly this is uh, because of the movement factor we can kind of control it through our rotation we're actually technically not I'm technically not moving right now and just kind of following the water which is kind of cool um, yeah so if we wanted to disable it we can just uh, type slash false and then we'll be able to hop out of the water so yeah that's basically that um, again uh, if we type something that isn't true then it will tell us to do that if we just type the command it will tell us the command so we can run multiple things uh, based on what procedures um, we basically run so again it only runs what uh, first thing actually executes first so if we look at the command argument again uh, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be checking for the command first if this one actually runs first then it's going to uh, test for the next command if this procedure runs first, then it's going to basically run that and cancel out the other call procedures if it's going to run if this one fails the toggle then it's going to run two if this one fails then it's going to run the final one so it would be really handy to use this in um for messages for related commands and stuff like that if you wanted to make things actually more user-friendly uh, you could print out messages or a list of commands and stuff like that for say help or something like that so people could basically find um, what commands they need and then they could auto automatically set up the command that they require so yeah that's basically it uh, if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.